Trix Ingado, KTN News. Now today Kenya joins the world to mark the International Pharmacist Day and the theme this year is Pharmacy Strengthening Health Systems. This morning we look at the role of pharmacists in the global health, achieving global health and uh, kissing point right here in Kenya, achieving the government, uh, the ambitious universal health coverage. In studio I'm now joined by Dr. Bethel Libea. He's a pharmacist and also um, consultant. He's just sitting next to me, Libea, um, consultant at the pharmaceutical procurement and supply chain management while at the far end is Dr. Misha Correo Odenio, a pharmacist once again and official at the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. Thank you so much gentlemen uh, for being here. Thank you. Yeah and we're having this conversation at a time when I would say it's a crisis in the pharmaceutical industry right here in Kenya. Um, conversations of even doctors advising patients not to do over the counter because of the quirks that we have out here so it's going to be a very interesting conversation because how do you know that um, this pharmacy is headed by a qualified pharmacist or not but anyway let's begin by um, the day itself the world pharmacist day uh, what is the significance of this day what the challenges that we are seeing here in Kenya for example on the quarks and um, you know over the counter was it the agenda that brought you know medics together and said you know what let's have this day to sanitize the sector let me begin with you dr Ray. all right thank you yeah. thank you thank you so much purity for having me on this particular discussion and uh today is a special day yeah. for the pharmacy fraternity if i may put it that way uh, because you're celebrating world pharmacist day and uh this day specifically is to amplify the significant role that a pharmacist plays in the entire healthcare ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And so, and you've mentioned uh, most specifically here in Kenya, because if you look at a pharmacist among the 33 plus cadres of healthcare professionals, it's one of the highly trained professional, uh, they, are, they are one of the highly trained professionals, mm -hmm. but also highly underutilized. And uh, most of these problems is systemic. Um, systems have been crafted in such a way that the pharmacist is not utilized to the best way they are meant to be utilized. And uh, the repercussions of that, it's visible for everyone to see. And you've captured some of them. We have the issue of quarks in the market. We have the issues of drug, big drugs being misused. We have issues of uh, antibiotics being misused because people who then end up handling medication, most of them may not necessarily be qualified professionals to do that. And mm -hmm. so having this day is to amplify the voice of a pharmacist, uh, to amplify the significant role that they play, and also to let the public know that we have these professionals that can help you as far as your medicine needs are concerned. So yeah. this is the significance of this day. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. And uh, before we get to, you know, who a pharmacist is and who is a qualified uh, pharmacist, because um, he mentioned that uh, pharmacists are highly unutilized. We are seeing <coughs> uh, pharmacies mushrooming everywhere in the city, up country, you know. When you talk about being unutilized, and there are so many pharmacies in the country and across, uh, until most patients don't even go to the hospital, they just yes. go and they are prescribed over the counter. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can elaborate on when you talk about being uh, unutilized, uh, what exactly does he mean, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you once again for yeah. inviting us to the studio today to talk on this issue about the pharmacy week. As my colleague has just uh, talked about, uh, Pharmacists are highly underutilized. If you look at the cadre and the knowledge of pharmacists mm -hmm. that we have in the country, there are quite many who can be used in uh, strengthening the health systems in the country. Mm -hmm. So you find that, just as my colleague has said, the problem is systemic. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the ways of maybe addressing this is maybe to see how the regulations can be put in such a way that we can be able to control some of these, like you said, quacks, yeah? And uh, it has become so much of a trade until the pharmacy practice itself has been neglected. So that is why we are here to amplify that and uh, to let the public know at least what is happening in the pharmacy field and what the pharmacists are doing in terms of trying to strengthen the mm -hmm. health systems. 
Yes. Yeah, and Dr. Bethel, there's always a concern in the health sector where when you look at, for example, the education sector, mm -hmm. you see that the teachers are united under a card and there's um, the Teacher Service Commission. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to health sector, everyone speaks for themselves. For mm -hmm. example, the nurses will say, this is what we do. The doctors will say the same. And they'll even issue a statement that uh, there was a time uh, the doctors issued a statement that the nurses felt that, the clinical officers felt mm -hmm. that, you know what, I think they are undermining our role. Mm -hmm. and, and the lack of unity among the health cadres mm -hmm. uh, brings the problem mm -hmm. yeah so where what exactly is the problem um, or the main issue mm -hmm. uh, around the pharmaceutical industry in the country as we speak all right thank yeah. you think that, that, that is a very important question and uh, I'll, I'll say that there are several answers to that yeah and uh, you've captured correctly that uh, we have sibling rivalry uh, among the healthcare professionals, but uh, what unites us or the convergence point of all of us is to see that uh, the patient is well taken care of, despite our differences. But having said that, if we take um, a look at the pharmaceutical industry in, the Ke in Kenya, there are several challenges that the profession is facing, both from within and without, because I'll, uh, I'm, I'm sure you've heard about this out there, that there's money in medicine. And so even people who do not have a background in pharmacy or any training in the pharmaceutical industry, they want a steak of this particular cake. So everybody is pulling the rock to their side. Mm -hmm. And um, we look at uh, the professionals themselves. We have two cadres of practice in Kenya. We have the pharmacists who are those who have, been, have done the degree, mm -hmm. that they've been trained at the, at the degree level. And then we have the pharmaceutical technologists, those who've done diploma in either pharmaceutical technology or right. they've done diploma in pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So these are two siblings under what we call pharmacy practice or pharmacy practitioners in Kenya. So the older siblings are the pharmacists and then the younger siblings are the pharmaceutical technologists. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, both professionals have a clear scope of practice based on their training that I've been trained as a pharmacist and this is my scope of practice mm -hmm. for the safety of the patients so we don't cross borders. Yeah. And then also same applies to the pharmaceutical technologists. Uh, you've mentioned about doctors issuing a statement and clinical officers coming up in arms. Most of the time is always around the area of scope of practice which mm -hmm. needs to be really made clear because at the end of the day when scope of practice is put in place is for the safety of the patient so mm -hmm. that I don't end up practicing something that I haven't been trained to do um, exercising it on the patient, it may end up harming them. So it's just there to safeguard the patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are challenges that come with that. Of course, people may feel that this scope of practice is sort of barring me from doing this and this and this, which isn't the case because at the end of the day, as I mentioned before again, is the safety of the patient. Mm -hmm. Now, moving out of the profession, uh, pharmacy practitioners, we look now at the industry at large. Mm -hmm. There are many things happening at the industry and um, as I mentioned before that pharmacies are highly underutilized and uh, there are efforts that are being made mm -hmm. to try to rectify the systemic errors that have been there before. For instance, the case of, uh, maybe just to add to the question that we had asked him yeah. to yeah. add something on that. Uh, when you walk into any public facility, um, chances are high when you get to the counter where you need to get your medicine, you'll be given your medicine, but the person will hand over the medicine, will spend as minimum time as possible with you, simply because the queue is long mm -hmm. and the place is understaffed. So when we have such a scenario, the pharmacist or the pharmaceutical technologies at the counter or at that particular facility may not have adequate time to address your case and still be able to clear the line, mm -hmm. you see. So the systemic problem that we experience there is understaffing. If we have enough pharmacists in public facilities, then it means they are able to put into practice, spend sufficient time with the patient, and put into practice the pharmaceutical knowledge to ensure that pharmaceutical care is actually delivered, mm -hmm. which is not happening. That's a systemic problem. Mm -hmm. Two is the issue of uh, employment of pharmacists. Uh, when you look at the number of pharmacists trained in Kenya, it's not that we are in surplus, but we'll find many unemployed pharmacists simply because um, the public system or the facilities or hospitals haven't really appreciated the role that pharmacists play. Mm -hmm. And so they think pharmacists, a pharmacist, their work is just to dispense medicine, which really goes beyond that. 
dispensing medicine is only a fraction of what a pharmacist can do. It goes mm -hmm. beyond that. Yeah, and you'll be yes. telling us what the role is. But yes. um, the infighting within the healthcare sector, yes. is it the one causing all this problem that you're not able to, for example, here in Kenya, in Kenya achieve the universal health coverage? Because for I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. If I go to the hospital mm -hmm. and the doctor tells me, make sure you do not um, buy over-the-counter um, medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, like you said, mm -hmm. the role of a pharmacist is not just to dispense the medicines, mm -hmm. but that is what literally we know the role of a pharmacist is so can again a pharmacist for example uh, prescribe um, a, a drug to a patient and when the doctor says that it means that there is some lo lack of trust that um, you might go over the counter and you're given drugs that are not uh, appropriate so how can this be resolved so that uh, medics uh, walk in unity and their value is appreciated as well <coughs> Uh, I think one of the ways in, this, in which this can be addressed is uh, through the regulations. Yeah. You find that uh, the current regulations that is being used in the country, which is called CAP 244, mm -hmm. was de developed in 1956. Yeah? And uh, since then, there have been a lot of developments in the medical sector in terms of uh, the drugs that are out there, how they are dispensed, and things like that. So one of the ways of trying to regulate this is like my colleague has just said, uh, we need to have proper laws in place mm -hmm. that specify what a pharmacist does, what a pharmacist technology does, so that there's that clear delineation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you find like right now there's the Kenya Drug Authority Bill that is being discussed in Parliament. I think uh, as the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, uh, our leaders yeah, have canvassed this a lot mm -hmm. and we want to thank you, the media, for always coming and inviting pharmacists or when we are having our meetings, at least helping us to highlight this. So currently, as we are trying to uh, draft the new regulations, you find that there are a bit of challenges that are there. And some of these regulations that the pharmacists are trying to bring in, it's not uh, rocket science. It's not something that we're developing from ourselves. Mm -hmm. You find that these are international best practices, yeah? So you find like uh, whatever the government is trying to implement, the, like the universal health care, the sustainable development goals, there's the issue of uh, every person has to, to have the <coughs> right, sorry, right for higher standards of quality. Yeah, so this is where we are trying to, as a pharmacist, to lobby the parliament. At least they can draft this bill in mm -hmm. such a way that it will be progressive. Because we have pharmacists who have a lot of knowledge, we interact with our partners outside the country, we have development partners, we have policy makers, and uh, some of the proposals that the pharmacists are giving mm -hmm. are based on these discussions that we've been having. And if Kenya is to move forward and uh, have better healthcare, better medicine regulations and the use, uh, I think it's important that uh, this bill is critically looked into and uh, the stakeholders, whatever stakeholders are bringing on board to be taken in. Mm -hmm. in and adopted in the country. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll have that revolving problem of always having medical issues, medical prescriptions, and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, Dr. Libea, uh, the public continue uh, to have, uh, to lack faith in the pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, it was big news, the, the, the poisons, the Pharmacy and Poisons Board uh, did uh, recall a medicine. We know that, mm -hmm. um, that, that, that that was initially used to relieve pain among the children. It was recalled because of concerns from the public. Mm -hmm. These concerns are not from the pharmacists or mm -hmm. the society or even the procurement and uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, management chain they're from the public mm -hmm. so why is this happening in the in the industry is it because we don't have uh, qualified people for example in charge of these medications mm -hmm. and even uh, ensuring that um, the procurement is properly done or mm -hmm. what and it's not the first one I think it's mm -hmm. almost the ninth this year mm -hmm. so why is this happening yeah, that, that's a yeah. very good question. Yeah. It touches on what we call pharmacovigilance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be delving into that and maybe just to break it down for people to understand. Yeah. It's actually part of what we call uh, ensuring that the drugs that are out there, they are safe, efficacious and of good quality. Mm -hmm. But maybe before I address that, uh, maybe I can add a thing or two to what he has mentioned mm -hmm. about the uh, challenges you are facing. You are sent uh, by a doctor, your patient, you are sent by a doctor to a pharmacist mm -hmm. and you advise do not get this and this and this. Yeah. And I think what is lacking in the space of medical practice in Kenya is what I call collaborative practice, where a pharmacist 
uh, collaborates with a medical doctor to um, treat one patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a model that currently is being worked on. Of course, it has worked elsewhere, what we call medication therapy management, which is, an, in short, is called MTM. Mm -hmm. It has been used in the US, UK, and we see that collaborative practice where you as a patient, when you visit your doctor, there is a contact between your doctor and your pharmacist. So when your doctor sends you to the pharmacist, the pharmacist can get back to your doctor and communicate regarding your needs, medicine needs, and advice that this medicine and this is not appropriate for, the, for this patient because of this and this and this. Mm. And that works well for the patient. So that is also a model that uh, we are looking to put into practice in Kenya to try to solve that push and pull that happens between a doctor and um, a pharmacist mm -hmm. in that case. Now, to the question you've asked about recalling of products, and I'd mentioned about pharmacovigilance. Mm -hmm. Um, if we look at what we call the life cycle of a product, of mm -hmm. course, it begins with development and then there is the manufacturing process mm -hmm. and all that. By the time a product is given what we call a marketing authorization, that is simply permission to market it in a certain uh, country or a certain market. It mm -hmm. means it has passed all the quality checks. But once it's out there, uh, it has to be monitored. Mm -hmm. Is it really meeting the standards? And you know, problems can come either through storage, through transportation, that may now affect the quality of the product by the time it gets to the intended user. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the case of that particular painkiller, I won't be able to mention the company or the brand name, but in the case of that painkiller and many others that have been recalled, is not that there was laxity with the regulator. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of what we call pharmacovigilance, where you re and, and, and the Pharmacy and Poisons Board has that particular portal or a form where you as a patient, you can actually fill information in case you buy a medicine and you realize it's giving you some side effects that are not captured in the leaflet mm -hmm. or is not up to the standard quality that you expect, you are able to fill that information in and send to them so they'll do uh, their own investigation. Mm -hmm. And if it's critical, they'll have to recall it. So it's part of ensuring that medicines that are out there, they are safe, efficacious of good quality. It's no cause for alarm. Yeah. That's how All I right. put it. Uh, Dr. Yes. Thank you so much, especially on the uh, st talking, touching on the storage of medicines because mm -hmm. I almost asked about that. So um, you've all, both, both the two of you agreed that there is uh, a sibling rivalry within the uh, healthcare sector mm -hmm. and it's majorly uh, the root cause of all these problems that we are seeing because there's no coordination, there's no cooperation. Um, you had quickly talked about the, the Kenya Drug Bill, uh, the, the, the Kenya Drug Authority yes. Bill, for example, that yes. is before Parliament. So, as as pharma, I've, I've heard pharmacists and even experts saying it's going to be a game changer in the drug in the in the in the medicine industry because you know this um, getting rid of the cartels in the industry and ensuring that um, the quacks, for instance, are not part of um, the negotiation. So maybe you can tell us more about the the bill, the K, the KDA bill, and uh, what it aims to achieve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, yeah. The Kenya Drug Authority bill. It's a regulation that seeks to better enhance the regulation of not only medicines, but of chemicals, uh, things like veterinary products, medical device. Because we find that uh, the scope of uh, pharmaceutical services is sort of expanded, yeah? And that is why we are saying uh, we are trying to hold discussions among the industry and the stakeholders to be able to ensure that uh, these regulations that are out there and we are benchmarked against are incorporated into the current bill. So you find that uh, currently the bill that is in parliament mostly is sort of, we can say it's more of trade related when you look at the, some of the proposals that have been put across. You find that uh, we need to have technical people in uh, technical areas. Like for example, you find that uh, the proposal for the regulator that is being proposed right now, you find that the pharmacist is not in the middle of all this. You find that engineers maybe have also been part of this, and this is what is causing the problem in our country. Mm -hmm. You find that, uh, for example, something to do with uh, pharmacy, ph pharmacist, eh? it's been watered down to say that pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. special technologies or something. There's th that clear delineation, there's a problem there. And that's what the pharmacy, uh, practice and the pharmacy profession is really trying to uh,
to, to push mm -hmm. for the country to adopt. Yeah. Yeah, for us to have uh, better regulation in terms of the medicines. And this will also bring in campus cosmetics because I think uh, cosmetics, are, there are some therapeutic cosmetics which are currently not regulated. We have chemicals in some of these, uh, like, which can harm the patient and things like that. So all these things need to be under proper control. And that is why we are saying the pharmacy's job goes beyond dispensing. There is so, so, so much more in which a pharmacist can play a role. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we are fighting for. And just one last point is that uh, we are trying to see whether this Kenya Drug Authority bill, they can change their name into Kenya Medical Health Products and Technologies, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that it can encompass all these uh, therapeutic classifications. And we are able to develop a bill and an act that will drive the country forward in terms of regulations of medicine. Because as the government is also trying to, uh, to boost local manufacturing of medicines, which is very good, and these are some of the areas that as pharmacists we are trying to push, yeah? to have that local self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. And I think a case in point is uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. I think it brought to, to fore some of the challenges that most countries are having in terms of having that self-sufficiency. So you find that uh, uh, the pharmacists are trying to put in place structures whereby the government can support the local industry so that we can also be self-sufficient and can be able to meet the medical needs of the patients and as a result the universal health care coverage will be taken into mm -hmm. consideration thank oh, you all right uh, dr libia let's talk about who um the role of a pharmacist actually we see um chemistry in uh, hospitals and uh, outside there in the market so uh should we believe all of them for instance who is a pharmacist and where can we find them yeah all right yeah um that, that's a good question purity thank you so much and um, the role of a pharmacist is diverse. Mm -hmm. The role of a pharmacist is diverse, and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, most people in the society look at a pharmacist as that uh, uh, person who sits behind the counter to dispense medicine. Right. But really, that, that's, that's a really a small fraction of what a pharmacist does, because mm -hmm. our training is vast. It covers a big area, and perhaps I'll mention quite a few of them, mm -hmm. uh, quite a number of them, and then delve in on the aspect of chemists. How mm -hmm. do you tell? This is being managed by a pharmacy, so this is being run by a pharmaceutical technologist, and this is being run by a quack. Yeah. Because it's really important. I've had friends who've gone to, um, who don't have a background in medicine or pharmacy, who've gone to facilities to get medicine, and yet how they prescribe when they call me, they tell me, I've been told take this medicine, this man. I find, me, I, I, I always, I mean, I get surprised because they've been given an overdose mm -hmm. because they've gone to a facility that is not being run by a professional. Mm -hmm. And so looking at the roles of a pharmacist, uh, the chemist is one of them. That, that is what we call a community pharmacy. Mm -hmm. That's the chemist, a community pharmacy. You walk into a pharmacy, you find a pharmacist there, they'll give you the medicine and take you through the instructions because that is a really important aspect mm -hmm. of pharmacy practice, taking the instructions on how you're supposed to take your medicine, any anticipated reaction side effect is really important that you get that information as a patient uh, the other area of practice is at the hospital setup and mostly you'll find them from level four going onwards especially those that have um, inpatient services because pharmacies form a, uh, play a critical role in patient management teams looking at treatment uh, sheets um, uh, advising on dosages of medicines and all that. They help the medical doctors and all those who are part of the patient management team. We we'll go to the industry side where we have these uh, drugs being manufactured. And at the industry side, it cuts across because we have different departments in an industry mm -hmm. and different areas of specialization. There's a production pharmacist, there's one who is in charge of quality, there's one who is in charge of regulatory affairs, the laws and the guidelines, mm -hmm. others in charge of marketing, so it's quite an array. And then you come now to uh, public health. And then under public health, you can talk about many things. Public health systems strengthening to ensure that the health uh, healthcare system is strengthened. We have other specialists in what we call health economics and health finance who are pharmacists. We have others who are in supply chain. I'm a consultant in procurement and supply chain. So uh, that is another area where pharmacists play their role. We have others in research who play a role, a role in research. We've talked about clinical trials. 
these medicines before they get to the market, they have to be to undergo clinical trials and pharmacists are needed in that particular space. So those are some of the roles that pharmacists play in the entire healthcare ecosystem. All right. And now when you talk about a chemist, you are a patient, you walk into a chemist along the streets or in your estate, and uh, you don't know how to tell whether it's being managed by a pharmacist or a pharmtech. Uh, I'll give you or I'll share uh, things that, three things or four, mm -hmm. that one should look out for. One, when you walk into a pharmacy that is being managed by a pharmacist, there should be a green cross somewhere. A green cross. Mm -hmm. Because a green cross is one of the requirements that the Pharmacy and Poisons Board requires that the pharmacies that are being managed by a pharmacist should have before they're given a registration or license. Mm -hmm. So there should be a green cross visibly displayed. Mm -hmm. For a pharmaceutical technologist, there should be a blue cross. Yes, for ph ph pharmaceutical technologies, there's a blue cro cross. Pharmacies, there's a green cross. And also that will help you tell uh, which pharmacy is being managed by who. Mm -hmm. And then two, uh, it's required by law that license for the person who is practicing there should be visibly displayed. The license, practicing license, the registration of the pharmacy should be visibly displayed. So when you walk into a pharmacy, you should be able to see it displayed on the wall and be able to read the credentials of the person managing the facility. Mm -hmm. At three, there is what we call health safety codes that the Pharmacy and Poisons Board gives that are displayed in retail facilities. So when you're able to send those health safety codes to the number that is always provided in that particular sticker in each facility, you should be able to get a response that this is a registered facility and is being managed by this person. And lastly, on the Pharmacy and Poisons Board website, it's possible to check actually the list of the facilities that have been registered and who is managing them. Mm -hmm. So if you log on to the pharmacy, you don't even need to log in, but you just search the Pharmacy and Poisons Board website, you'll be able to look at the professional's name, and if the, number been, the registration number has been displayed there, you're able to check it out online and also the name of the facility mm -hmm. to tell you this is a registered facility. Right. Yes. And uh, Dr. Odenyo, what is um, the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya doing really? Because I think you are an umbrella body for the pharmacists to ensure that there is public trust as far as um, the industry is concerned. Yeah. Okay, yes, uh, the Pharmacy Society of Kenya has been very active on this front in terms of uh, uh, engaging <coughs> the government, parliament, stakeholders, policy makers in trying to ensure that uh, there is better regulation, yeah? And uh, we've had some of our and members... And you say there is better regulation now? There is better regulation, mm -hmm. but needs to be strengthened. Yeah. And not only strengthened, uh, you see, uh, the health sector is really moving at a very fast pace, yeah? Mm -hmm. You can look at what is happening in the U.S. concerning the AI and new things coming up, yeah? So if you look also on the pharmacy sector, there are things like biotherapeutic medications which are coming, biological drugs. You see, th 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 these are things which can only be handled by a specialist pharmacist who has been trained. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the scope in which pharmacy has evolved, eh, you find that these days we have pharmacists who are, like my colleague said, medicine therapeutic management. You find that there are pharmacists who are specialized in hypertensive medicines. Mm -hmm. You find that there are pharmacists who are uh, specialized in diabetic medicines, those kind of cadres. So this is what we are trying to push in terms of uh, increasing uh, the role of pharmacists and giving more access to pharmacists. Yeah. Because I think also when uh, the devolved government came, you find that our laws still remain the same. Yeah. And that is why sometimes we have challenges maybe in the counties in terms of having employing pharmacists and ensuring that pharmacies are in each and every, every sector, mm -hmm. in the hospitals especially. Because I think it is, a, it is a common knowledge. Most of the time when we interact with patients, for example, when you're dispensing a medicine, yeah, you'll try, a pharmacist does not, does not just sell for you that medicine. A pharmacist will talk to you, will try and ask you uh, what has the doctor told you. And, and, and I can guarantee you 90% of the time, the patients don't know what they've been prescribed or how to do it. Mm -hmm. And you see, it is that pharmaceutical knowledge that will be able to guide these patients. So that, for example, there are some drugs, probably if you take uh, a way of excretion is maybe the urine will be orange, or maybe when you go to uh, for a long call, your feces will be black. You find that these are things that pharmacists already have that knowledge. Yeah? And instead of a uh, patient panicking, it's the pharmacist who can be able to come and tell the patient, okay, this is just 
this is not a side effect this is not a bad this is just part of the execution of that mm -hmm. of that drug yeah yeah and one major important thing that we also want to highlight concerning the kenya drug authority bill is that to to get root to get hold of the problem that you're seeing the sibling library and things like that the pharmaceutical society of kenya is trying to push for a, a pharmacy practice bill yeah which uh, a proposal has been made and i think also this has been submitted to parliament and we are really asking the parliamentarians to take this seriously because if we don't put these regulations in place and these specializations and people to do the jobs that which they are trained for mm -hmm. this is an effort in futility in terms of uh, improving the health care of the country and being able to give patients the quality of medicine that they deserve that are safe and efficacious. All right, and time is not on our side. We have to wrap it up now, but thank you so much, Dr. Bethel Libea, for being here. Also, thank you, Dr. Mesha Cordenio, for making time for us. I wish you all the best in your campaign today. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. All right, that brings us to the end of the News Center this Monday morning. Thank you for watching. I'm Purity Masenzuki. Keep watching KT News, and God bless.